are also other things that we can do with inequalities, namely we can solve them and find the solution set. Um, if you'll remember whenever we were dealing with equations, then we had the addition property and we also had the multiplication property. And what those basically did was allow us to be able to add anything we wanted to as long as we did it to both sides and also we could multiply or the reciprocal multiply by the reciprocal which would be dividing um, the same thing on both sides. We have those same properties when we talk about inequalities. Um, we have the addition property here of inequalities that basically says if you've got some number that's less than another then if you were to add the same thing to both sides that inequality is still a true statement. And then likewise if you've got something that is larger than another number, if you add the same thing to both sides, you still maintain that same um, balance there. Now when it comes to the multiplication property of inequalities, I don't really like the way that they have this listed out, just because it, it makes it seem a whole lot more complicated than what it really is. So you can read through the rule, but I think that it's just a whole lot easier to use a simplified version. And basically, when you solve inequalities, you're going to use the same exact rules that you do with equations. You can add anything you want, subtract anything you want, as long as you do it to both sides. You can multiply, you can divide, as long as you do it to both sides. You just have one new extra rule with inequalities. And that is, if you happen to multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the symbol over. So for instance, if I had negative 3x um, is less than 6, then when I divide both sides by the negative 3 to get the x alone, I've got x on the left and 6 divided by negative 3 would be negative 2, but because we divided by that negative we have to flip the inequality over to greater than. That's really the only thing that is different about these problems and that's it. Let's go ahead and work some. This one says solve each linear inequality, express your solution using set builder notation and interval notation, and then graph the solution set. So we have quite a bit to do with these problems. This first one, we have 3 times x plus 2 is greater than 11. So let's move the 2 to begin with, subtracting 2, doing the opposite. Now we have 3x. And on the right hand side, we have 11 minus 2, which would be 9. We did not multiply or divide by a negative. We just subtracted. So the sign stays the same. Now I still need x alone, so I have to undo that multiplication. We need to divide both sides by 3. And now we have x on the left, and 9 divided by 3 is 3 on the right. We did not multiply or divide by a negative, so the symbol stays the same. Now if we were to graph that, here's 0 and 1, 2, 3 would be right here. Everything larger than 3 would go to the right of that. Because there is no equality, we would use a parenthesis. So when we write this as interval notation, that would be everything from 3 all the way to infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis, and in this case, so does the 3. If we write it using set builder notation, this would be the set of all x's such that x is greater than 3. So these would be our answers.